So let, let's take a look at objects. So um, in the objects tab, you find it under, if you right click, if you don't have it, if I close everything, you can find it down there, objects, and you get this tab open. So in my case, I have this Gatling object. And um, it's essentially, it's, it's what it is. It's, it's an object, but you, you can, you can add uh, more objects or you can add versions of objects. So when you get a new object, you can right click and said, uh, add version, you browse to wherever it is and uh, um, you will get the new object as a version. So let us yes, go to Z. Let's take the, this one priest. Alembic and um, nothing happens and that's because it doesn't switch to the new object so you have to go under the version here and then we see oh it's a few cubes so um, you can go back under the attributes down here you have a few things you can do so the cast shadows, for example, you see I have a shadow here on my uh, light. So one of the lights have, have a shadow being calculator. If I turn off shadows on the object cast shadows, then the whole scene, it's um, all that object will not cast any shadows to itself. So hidden, it, it's like you hide object, locked, uh, then you can't paint on it. If I start, there's no way to paint, but if I turn that off. Uh, okay, so subdivision, that's something. If I would subdivide this object now, you have the option to apply subdivision and that's open subdivision. I'm not sure how long it's going to take on this object, it's quite dense, but let's try it. So we have the option to set how many levels of subdivision, let's take one in, the, in my case. So you have an option to say force subdivision, and that is, um, for example, uh, maybe you have an, a, um, an alembic file or something that you want to uh, subdivide everything on and there's um, a little caveat with the alembic so you have to have a uh, a subdivision mesh attribute on alembic files for it to subdivide so you can either force everything or you have to add this attribute so we're gonna look at that next how to actually subdivide alembic files uh, but uh, let's let's kick for subdivisions so it's gonna subdivide everything so here's um, Catman Clark is probably the most common so this is the way we interpolate the UV boundaries and that is something that you really have to check out with your renderer what's the best option it's a little tricky to get it right so I kind of uh, have used sharp edges and sharp corners for random man a lot. That seems to be the most, the best option there. Um, might be different how your renderer is gonna produce. Uh, hit okay. And um, it's gonna take a little while. So maybe pause now. Uh, I didn't take that long. So let's look at wireframe it's quite uniform this model so it doesn't it's not that of a big difference so here a step between zero and one as we see some areas might need creases 
So in my case here, I would probably go into the model and add uh, creases on some of the edges. And as you see, it's not the best built geometry either. So, but this was just for a demonstration purpose once a few years ago. Anyway, um, so that's the way. So now we, we can switch between and here we see we have another version. It's still associated with the object up here. So it's not like adding a new object, this is a new version. If you want to add a new object, you can right click and say add object. Let's take the same So let's set the Gatling object to the actual be the actual Gatling and the other object I have to be the ball uh, the polygon polygons. So if I take this one, move I can move the the object. Uh, scale it. <laughs> I don't use this uh, a lot, <laughs> I must say. Uh, but I mean, there may be some instances you want to move an object. Let's reset objects transformations on that one. So that was in the object menu. And here you can duplicate, export object. And um, something. Let's hide this. So you can also add um, a uh, Mari sub uh, occlusion kind of calculation. It's not the best. It depends on the geometries um, sub uh, or how many like vertices or how dense the object is essentially. So if you hit this ambient occlusion. It's going to calculate ambient occlusion on the object and they, this might take a while. So I might pause this as well. Okay, so um, let's look at it. Uh, nothing happened. So what does it do? Yeah, it's the sub uh, the occlusion. I mean, uh, is something that is handled either in shading. So if I would make a, uh, a shader now, let's take a shader let's take the AI standard and in the AI standard you have an option to to have some display features so here you can add ambient occlusion so you see when I Enable it with this slider. If it's zero, it's zero, nothing. One, it's a ambient occlusion. And there's also a layer. So if I turn it off and just take current channel, if I go to the layer, and uh, hit tab and start to, to type A then we see you get all the layers that starts with a and the first one is ambient occlusion so this one is going to access that baked ambient occlusion but one problem if i hit constant shading with the ambient occlusion if we look at it it depends firstly it depends on your objects how well subdivided it is because i think this some is some kind of vertex and the beyond occlusion bake and you see where it's not as dense you see we get those strange artifacts uh, so this is not a, a real like ray traced or whatever ambient occlusion so if you want to do that you have to do it either in a third party package or maybe use the the modo renderer that has a bake option for ambient occlusion. 
we look at that later. But yeah, this is um, a way to use ambient occlusion. That's that's kind of the basics. So let's take a look at um, how we can subdivide with creases next from an alembic file. So that's in the next chapter.